We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And to join me on The Spicy Life podcast in the G spot, that's guest spotlight, Chloe. Hello, we're talking about I have the beautiful, the amazing Chloe Veach. The crowd goes wild. Whoa, Chloe wild. is a reality star and host, appearing on Too Hot to Handle, The Circle, and Perfect Match. Now, this next Netflix darling has recently moved to LA and is the host of the newest dating format, Sneaky Links Dating After Dark. Sneaky, sneaky, like, sneaky, linky. Not so sneaky anymore, <laughs> is it? Is that right in the open? Now it is public. Yes. Uh, you guys may have uh, seen posts on Chloe or my page about this awesome show, Sneaky Links. We did together. We can talk about the show. We have from we don't have permission to go into details about the show, but you guys will see us on there. Some drama, uh -huh. a lot of relationship stuff, yep. a lot of wounds and healing. <laughs> it, was actually, it was actually that good. That it was a member of the one of someone that one, a member of the production knew that actually leaked the story to the press. So it no. wasn't actually meant to leak. But Are you serious? It. When so, I saw it, I was like, "Oh, great! They released." Yeah, oh no, it was a Netflix. It was sneaky. Yeah. Oh my god! Which is common knowledge. So I didn't. I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. I, I didn't know. I that. just was like, "Oh yeah, now I can repose." Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we, we the it sneaky the, the sneaky goes on. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys gotta watch it when it comes hey, out. It comes out like what next, next? I don't know exactly when next spring or something. I can't. Next year, yeah. Yeah, but you guys will see our faces again working together as a team. It's incredible. But uh, one thing about working with Chloe, I loved her authenticity, um, her infectious energy, and I think that what has made her one of what I believe to be America's sweetheart and Netflix's sweetheart is your vulnerability, okay? I think that you are probably one of the realest and most incredible and entertaining. That's actually on my pizza. You guys, if I've done the pizza exer with, exercise with you, um, entertainment is on my pizza, which is what like I qualify in order to like be able to be in relationship with someone. And you crossed entertainment off like crazy because you're so freaking funny. Like you are just like adorable and passionate. And when we got the show together, I was like, oh, I see the magic. I oh. see why Netflix chose us to work together. Yeah. I 100% I got it. And I was like, I see why America's obsessed with you. The dynamic. Yeah. I mean, it. America and the UK, if you guys yeah. haven't picked up on the accent. <laughs> uh, hi guys, I'm Kelly Page. I'm from London. <laughs> Ethics. So if you could, she might have to put subtitles on <laughs> if you're watching. No, I was mesmerized by your accent the entire time, but I wanted to get you on the show. I was like, I have to have you on my podcast because I mean, yes, we've talked a lot about relationships, but mm -hmm. I also think that like we can be used as vessels still to continue helping people. Yeah. And so this episode is how to turn a heartbreak into a breakthrough. And I feel like you've lived a very public life mm -hmm. uh your relationships have been shown your um uh, connections have been shown very publicly uh on multiple platforms mm -hmm. and so I'm like who better to talk about relationships with than Chloe <laughs> I mean I've been through the ringer I have been through the ringer I have been in so many relationships but you know what it's a blessing I think it is and I used to be ashamed of it and I used to feel guilt I don't know if anyone else is like that, but like I am such a relationship person. I'm, I, I don't like being on my own. I know that can be toxic because you've told me that before. <laughs> but I've come to terms with the acceptance of just I love to love. Yeah, I've got a lot of love to give, and I think there is a, a fine line between falling in love, going through that harsh reality of heartbreak, and yeah. then going through that breakthrough. What you've just spoke about and. I feel like through all of my love trials and tribulations and my heartbreak, I have also come to some solutions. Yes, yeah, so and this is what okay. I wanted to talk about. I want you Take guys- out of me. Yeah, like I want you guys to understand that um, similar to Chloe, I am what would be considered like a loveaholic. I thrive in relationship. I'm better in relationship. Mm -hmm. I know this about myself. The times that I had to force myself to be alone was times that I know that I could not have the distraction mm -hmm. of relationship and the emotional management that is required for relationship. I could only be responsible myself. And it was in those times of being single and alone mm -hmm. 
that the real healing can begin because you have to be so self-reflective. You don't have that other person to distract you from self. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to put that out there for you guys who are like, I don't understand why we have to be alone in this world. I don't want you to be alone. I, I am <laughs> a magnetic matchmaker. I want you to be in partnership. But what Chloe's referencing is that like being alone sucks. It doesn't feel good. It's, it's, but growth isn't supposed to 100%, 100% of the time feel mm -hmm. like raindrops and bubble gum, right? Like mm -hmm. it's painful. Mm -hmm. But I love that you are transparent with that. You're like, no, I want to be in a relationship. So relationship I shall have. And relationship you stay in. Yeah. So I think that that's like incredible. You're currently in a relationship right now. I am, yeah. Okay. I want to hear how you decided that you wanted to commit. How did you know, like, I'm ready to take this person seriously? With this specific or in general? With Joel. Let's talk about Joel. Okay. So we, we use the real person. Your boyfriend is Joel currently is my Joel. my current partner. We've been together for just over a year. Um, I've known him all my life, 15 years. And I knew to commit to him when we moved in with each other. Mm. Which is backwards. Yeah. How did you... You moved in and then you were like, I want to be with you? Yeah. Because I've known him for longer than 15 years. He knows my family. He was best friends with my brother. And it just made sense. And I was going for a breakup... I really wanted some comfort company. And me and Joel both sat there and said to each other, like, we've both just broke up with our partners. <laughs> this is going to be toxic. Like, we are <laughs> we are going to use and abuse each other. And this is going to be extremely you guys unhealthy. Said that? Oh, this yeah. is awesome. I love the transparency. I remember the conversation we had in the car by the seafront. And, and I basically said to him, like, this isn't, this isn't going to work. Like, this is just going to be sex. And he was like, okay, whatever. He was a bit like, oh, and so was I. Yeah. Like, it was one of those moments when you're like, you know, I really, really want to do it with him and I really want to kind of just be with him, but it's not going to work. So I have to, it's like, a, I don't want to do it, but I really want to do it. Yeah, it's like yeah, that yeah. And the lust is there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and every day was a fight mentally and emotionally to just keep away from him. And it was that just magnetic spark of I need to be with this man otherwise I feel like I'm gonna die mm. like it was it was that intense and I thought Do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise him by looking at properties and I put a deposit down on a house we moved in with each other within three or four weeks what yeah. Chloe to a lot of people this is gonna sound insane yeah because they're like wait if I were to do that a guy would like Never. He would think I was crazy. He would, yeah. think, you know, so how did you make this like crazy decision? I just don't You just think. took a huge risk. I just do. Honestly, when it comes to relationships, and do you know what I have realized going on the topic of why we are here today, that most of my previous relationships have ended up in heartbreak because of this. Mm. But I've come to the conclusion of, I don't feel like that is my toxic trait. Mm -hmm. I feel like my toxic trait is not knowing when to walk away. Mm. So like I can jump in head first. So it's not the rushing, because um, some people would say like, oh, well you have an anxious attachment style. Yeah, oh, I, I think I do. <laughs> but you own it, you're like, okay, I'm just going to, so you're like, I'm not gonna change that part of, my, <laughs> of myself. Yeah. You're like, I'm gonna own it. But then how do you deal with the consequences when you rush in and then you realize that the person who you signed up for isn't who you thought they were? I think it's just a lot of conversation, communication. Uh, me and Joel have had couples therapy. We have had time apart from the house whenever we've been extremely like overwhelmed of the situation. But I can honestly say hand on heart that every day I spend with him, like, you know, yeah. I flew him out to where we were filming yeah. and he stayed with me the whole time. In the oh hotel. my gosh. And I, I fell in love with Joel when and I met him. He, I was like, he's incredible. <laughs> <I love laughs> he's him. so funny. Cause both, he, he's entertaining too. <laughs> he fits the pizza. <laughs> um, and then he also came to LA for two months. And I'm like, I genuinely can't be away from this guy for, for longer than an hour. Um, whether that's healthy or not, I don't know. But I haven't had a con consequence of that yet. So until I'm slapped in the face, yeah. if this isn't right, you need to stop. Well, you and Joel are on like a grey like carpet ride right now. Mm -hmm. But previous relationships, when you rushed in and got you in trouble, how did mm -hmm. you reconcile that? <sighs> like you see you're in the relationship, you're like, I jumped in, I went in too soon, this uh -huh. isn't the person for me. You said earlier you didn't know when to leave or you didn't leave soon enough. Yes. What was the consequences of that? The consequences were extreme post-traumatic stress with trauma mm. and 
mental torture, allowing myself to be drained to 1% energy. My battery mm. for my social, my family, my work was just drained. Yeah. And having that experience, and I'm sure a lot of people listening will understand that if you are with someone who is toxic, they drain you, but you still want to be with them for <sighs> some reason. And I think with me, because I was so young, I was with this person when I was, I would say like 20 years old. Um, we moved in almost instantly. I fell madly in love and it just got extremely toxic to the point where we also had couples therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, At least you get help, Chloe. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely a fixer. I'm like, okay, you're toxic. We need to fix this. Yeah. You know? But there's a difference between someone that wants to change and wants to accommodate your feelings and emotions with that mutual respect, and then someone who's just like completely selfish, does not care, and yeah, is, and it extreme gaslighter mm. I don't use that word lightly by the way I hate when people overuse it but it was it was sending me crazy and the consequence was I didn't leave yeah and then after I did leave it was the point where I was just completely broken and then I had to endure like six or seven months of intense therapy okay so um because this is a show that I always like to like educate them just know I'm always gonna like circle back to this and let's explain this part so for people who use the word toxic Chloe said you know she doesn't like using words like you know gaslit um she's not using it lightly i want you to explain some of the indicators that this relationship was toxic so mm -hmm. gaslighting he made you feel crazy for things mm -hmm. that you know to be true so he invalidated your feelings yeah. what else did he do what were the other indicators of toxicity so with the gaslighting it was um physical and mental emotional mm. so it was um Every day he would, this would be like a, a minor red flag. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, oh, it's a bit of a beigey red. He would run in the room um, and he would he would wear like these masks, scary masks. <laughs> okay. Weird. Wasn't expecting this. He loved okay. Halloween. So he, he'd like run in the bedroom and he'd just jump scare me. And I'd be like, oh, stop it. And then it got to the point where it was like, it would get more sinister and more sinister. And I like repeatedly said, like, I can't come upstairs thinking that you are going to scare me every time. Like, it's not just a jokey, ah, I've got you, babe. Yeah. It was like, you would hide in the closet for like an hour at a time, or you would wait until the lights were off and then creep down. It got sinister. An hour? Yeah, like, what is wrong with you? Um, and it would get to a point where I would mention it in conversation and he would go, what? Like, I've only done it, like, once or twice. What are you on about? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, maybe he just doesn't think it's that bad. Yeah. Right? So then I'm justifying the reasons as to why he's telling me that I feel like I'm going crazy. And then apart from that, it would be... I would drive to the shop in his car. I would... I would get lost because, I don't know, I, I would take a wrong turn and then come back home. I'd be, like, an extra two minutes late. And then I would come in and he would be sat there, like, raging. And he would be like... I have a GPS on my car mm. and I know that you went to this address. And I'm like, I didn't go to that address. And he's like, no, you did because I have the proof. And I'm like, well, can you show me the proof? And he's like, see, this is what I mean. You get so defensive. And then he'll flip it. And I'm like, I feel like I'm going crazy right now. Yeah. I did not go. And I'm like, did I? <laughs> You're like, did I stop at the supermarket? <laughs> did I go and to then, Target? <laughs> it would, because it was so long ago, I can't remember the, the little bits and bobs. Because with trauma, you know, you forget. You don't want to remember that part of yourself. But with the therapy, I healed a lot of it. Um, but those were, were some of the, the major Yeah, it points. sounds like he was like jealous and stalking as well mm. if he... And extremely controlling as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. extremely All of these, like, controlling, <laughs> stalking mm -hmm. you. Power plays, right? Like, yeah. you said gaslighting. He's, like, making you feel crazy for these things. He's scaring you. This is my worst relationship. What was... I, I'm wondering what's behind the... Making you think he's, you know... A, a scary monster or what's the um jason or michael myers or michael whatever myers. <laughs> yeah. That's just, yeah like freddy cougars i'm like what is what i wonder what's behind that there's something in catching you off guard or mm -hmm. like petrifying you that he was finding pleasure in well there's a term and it actually got to the point of me reaching out to one of his exes after they broke up um, and my mom and my family actually reached out to his family and exes as well because my, it got to the point where my mom was extremely worried and so was my dad. What is the condition that the doctor said that he was struggling with? It was sadist. Okay. Yeah. So he likes inflicting pain on other people. Yeah. Okay. So if this is what you're experiencing and other girlfriends have experienced this too, mm -hmm. how did you get the courage to walk away? How did you figure out like, I got to run? 
I got to the point where I was extremely isolated, didn't speak to my friends, my family. I lived with him. So it was like every day I would endure this behavior, this disrespect, and it would just become more and more normal. Mm. So I didn't actually see it as a red flag. I'm like, oh, it's just him. I love him. So yeah. like, this is just the way we are. This is our dynamic. We're yeah. special, you know? And you believe that to be true? That like he this- couldn't, He couldn't hide it. Yeah. When we were in couples therapy, like- I don't know if this is t TMI. You can cut it out if you want. No, please give I it. I don't know how open and honest this conversation 100, should be. The more that you give, the better. We like it, it real here. It was like during like intercourse and stuff, mm -hmm. it would be it would be consensual, but it would go past the point of <clears throat> feeling good. It would start to hurt. It would it would it would be painful mm -hmm. and I'd like voice it and whatever else. And then it would kind of just be like, oh, just shut up. Mm. And it would, it would, he would smile and his eyes would widen and he like, I could physically see the buzz that he would get. And I remember having this conversation with my mum, like for the last time, because I was like, this is just not, I can't deal with this. Wow. And anyone that is out there that does have that, as long as you are transparent and you have a conversation with your partner and you have that level of respect, the communication's there, you have safe words, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You, know? you can't change who you are. And I just think because it was a, it, it was the gaslit chucked back at me, yeah. was, you're going crazy, I never done that. And then it resulted in like bite bruise marks and bruises. And, and when we went to couples therapy, that was when I broke down and the therapist actually asked to see me one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. She said, I, I showed her all the bruises and marks and stuff. And she said, this is physical and emotional abuse. Wow. And he is inflicting pain on you because it, it actually brings him pleasure. Him and brings him pleasure. So it got, to, oh, I got goosebumps. Um, I'm sorry so yeah, I'm making you was, no, share okay. this or relive it, but this is helping people who might be experiencing this and be like, oh, yeah. it's not supposed to hurt that bad. Like, yeah. no, it's at the point when it should stop being pleasurable for you, mm -hmm. it is wrong. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, that was my consequence of staying in a relationship that I knew I should have left. But the guilt and shame left me a long time ago. As soon as I seeked help, had a conversation with a therapist. And I know that sometimes therapists can be really expensive. Mm -hmm. So anyone that does want an alternative, there are online therapists that can do Zoom calls. And I feel like even just talking to your friend group really helps. Mm -hmm. Because your normal might not be the norm. Yeah. It might be the norm for you because you've lived it every day for a certain but amount of time. But what about the people who are afraid of judgment, right? So like some people are like, well, I don't want to share it with my friends. I don't want to tell my family mm -hmm. because they're dealing with like their own personal shame around it. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest for them? So it got to a point where my dad and my mom were that worried because I just wasn't talking to them. Mm. It was like, I'd, I felt that judgment. You're closing everybody yeah, out. I didn't want to tell anyone. I was like, if I tell them, they're going to think he's a bad person. I mean, the truth was he was. Right, but you don't want them to think that. I you want them to still give you essentially their blessing for you to be with them. Because it's a reflection on me, mm -hmm. what I allow in my life. And I don't want that embarrassment and that shame. Um, I went on to a website. First of all, I started to Google the symptoms of what I was seeing in his mannerisms, behavior, and his words, choice of actions. And then it started to spell out the picture for me. Like, maybe it's this. Mm -hmm. Or if you are experiencing abuse and all this mental stuff and emotional and I didn't realize emotional abuse was was a thing mm. I thought if he hits me that's abuse but if he doesn't hit me I'm just being an I'm just being a a, a woman like mm -hmm. a girl that's just complaining and then it got to a point where I would go on these rabbit holes and that's when I was like oh maybe he's a sadist and okay well what what signs should I look out for? So you can also do the, the, the kind of investigation yourself in your own time. Um, go out for lunch or go to the bathroom, get in the bath, lock the door, go on so go on uh, the internet, yeah. private do some browser, research. do the research and then delete the tabs after. Because then you're educating yourself and you're reminding yourself on a daily basis that this behavior isn't normal, nor is it acceptable mm. ever. So having that constant daily reminder once I did kind of awaken to the idea of maybe I am being mentally abused because I'm crying all the time. Yeah. You know, You're like this, this doesn't normal. feel good. Yeah. So to Chloe's point, you guys, if if you're experiencing any of these things, right? She said, a sadist is someone who enjoys and gets finds pleasure from inflicting pain on the other person. Mm -hmm. 
masochist is someone who finds pleasure inflicting pain on themselves. Mm -hmm. So two different things. But I think that it's important that you understand that like that's not love. And some people will feel like, well, but we are in love. No, no, Mm -hmm. no, no. But that's not the definition of love because Mm -hmm. love is supposed to be kind. And so Mm -hmm. if someone's being unkind to you, Mm -hmm. you something in your spirit is starting to tell you this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I like that you were like, let me start to investigate why this is wrong, how this Mm -hmm. is wrong. And then you sought help. It's not like you just like left the relationship. You sought help. Yeah. And then it feels, it sounds like somebody validated what you were feeling, Mm -hmm. what you were kind of like questioning in your spirit. You needed that additional like third party there to tell you like, Chloe, you're not crazy. This is really going on. Because I feel like people underestimate when you live with someone that is an abuser, because every every like my normal reaction would be to bring it up to him because he's my partner. I love mm-hmm. him. Like the way you're making me feel right now, it's not okay. Yeah, it would be flipped. So then I got taught like a baby does. A baby gets trained, gets uh, validated, gets told off when it's doing something wrong, and and gets praised when it's doing something right. Mm-hmm. So my mind was being rewired every single wow. day. It was like every time I spoke about about my emotions, I would get disowned yeah he wouldn't speak to me this was manipulation 101 so then it's like okay I can't bring up my emotions so how am I going to I'm just not going to and then you start to lose track of what emotions am I feeling oh it's just normal when you start to feel them for a certain period of time it's like oh this is just normal you know but yeah that was one of my experiences. But how did you walk he, away? What was it? Did you send him a letter? Did you tell him I'm gone? Did you just disappear in the middle of the night? Because you yeah. had a place with this person. It, it, it completely disappeared, yeah. It got to the point where I knew that when I was around him, I could not leave. It was, I was planning for weeks and weeks and weeks. And when I went and see the therapist, it was like the therapist then privately messaged me. She mm. shouldn't have. But she privately messaged me on Facebook. She found my my name and she said, I'm extremely worried about you. Mm. Um, this is my personal number. He see the message on my phone and he thought that we'd orchestrated the whole counselling session, therapy session to fight against him and mm. make him feel crazy. And then it was... It was a way of turning me against the therapist so I didn't listen to her. Mm -hmm. And now I see that, but at the time I didn't. So after the therapist, my parents and everything else going on with him, I was like, I need to just go and have lunch with my friends in London. I was living three hours away from home. So I went to London and my friends were like, well, Chloe, like you look ill like what is wrong like you need to talk to us told him everything it just blurted out I'm crying in in the middle of London um I've got one of my suitcases with me and they're like you need to come around ours you need to send someone around his house to get your stuff and you are never ever going to speak to him again Mm. blocked his number that day haven't ever spoke to him wow ever it was a, if I don't do this now, I'm yeah. not going to do it or I'm going to end up dead. Do you feel like talking about it with your friends, though, empowered you? Like in that conversation when they were like, you're going to do this or else? Like they, when they when they kind of like drew that line and like, you know, spoke life into you, do you feel like that made mm-hmm. you stronger to cut him off? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I had my doubts with what they were saying yeah. because I was so conditioned to his way of thinking that everything that they were saying, I was like think are they just jealous of my relationship well they don't really know him that well so like they can't justify his behaviors like I can Mm. they're not clouded by my feelings yeah because they don't feel the same feelings towards him that I do so actually they've got more clarity they can see it better yeah they're not being blinded by love yeah like I am so when you speak to people in that instance and they say it and they come across less emotional it's because they're not caught up in the love fuck of what situation you are in. So that definitely empowered me to leave. I'm so glad I did. Oh my gosh, me too. I didn't know that you had experienced like all of these things from this ex. But I think that some of us, you know, can relate to some of the things that you just Mm. listed that he's did. We've all been in an unhealthy relationship before. So Mm. some of those things like we've all experienced. But like, I think that you admitting early on, like, I stay a little too long sometimes or I don't walk away when Mm -hmm. I should. Do you feel like you've now acquired that skill set to be able to walk away when you should? Yes. And I think that's a good thing. But it's also been instilled in me through fear. Mm. And I think that there are healthier ways of of having that mindset mindset other than it being instilled in you by fear. Mm -hmm. 
I think now I'm grateful because I'm like, I'm so glad I had that experience. Yeah. Because now I can look out for the red flags and signals and warning signs and I can talk about it and yeah. people can listen. And if someone's going through something similar or if it's not as bad or if it's worse, it's yeah. just, this is factual proof that it does progress and it doesn't get better. So, yeah. If to, after that experience, some people would be like, I'm done with love. How were you not done with love what made you not tap out the game i'm just a lover girl <laughs> i'm just a lover girl you're like that was bad but i still have hope that there's yeah, someone else out definitely. there definitely do you know what not everyone is the same and i just i don't i love love i don't want to give up on love and yeah because i am so optimistic and want to see the good in everyone it, it does make me an easy pushover for mm. manipulation and i know that but i can't live my life thinking yeah. i can't find someone just because of what's happened to me anyone that's been through trauma and, and ptsd from past relationships that have been toxic there's always there's always hope i mean especially when you listen to spicy's podcast <laughs> I love it. I love it. The flag. <laughs> Thank you, Chloe. You're welcome. Share with me though. We're we're currently dating. We're in we're in a happy relationship. You decided that because um, you were with Joel for a second. You decided to. I was I was with you. I feel like when you did the hard launch like you yes. like went public with your relationship on social, uh -huh. and I remember talking about it with you moments before. But I want you to like share with us, how did you know that you were ready to profess publicly that you are in a relationship, right? Because sometimes we want to protect that. We want to hide it even. What were your sentiments in the moment and what was your intention behind it? I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know why. I didn't know how. I didn't know. It was just a, I need to just do this now. Because previously, obviously, I've been on like dating shows and yeah. stuff, and some of my relationships have been put in the papers and whatever. I've never really be shun been shunned for any of my relationships, which is good. But it's just that tie of my life with you being public is one thing, but then also having my character being tied with yours mm. is another mm -hmm. because I've worked so hard with my career mm. and and modeling and and tv and stuff like that and I've, I've made so many sacrifices yeah so many sacrifices like I was sober for two and a half years I lived in my mum's house for so long I've just moved across to, across the world you did like, recently just these, moved to LA. I'm so excited to live, to LA, live in LA but I made all these sacrifices and I'm currently filming my first ever hosting gig. I don't know why then was the right time, but I thought if I'm going to do it, I need to just do it. Otherwise I'm going to sit. And I remember speaking to you about yeah. it. I was like, spicy. I need to really think about posting someone and, and attaching someone to me on my socials because if, if they fuck up, I'm subject to that failure Yeah, it's too. not they F up, we F up. We, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was, after I'd done it, I'm like, oh, now we can do like fun content. And yes. I also like to like, TikTok videos with you. And you guys are so adorable. You, you guys are made for each other. It's so cute. Um, your guys' dynamic. But like, I think that for other couples out there, which we will see and we've, we've, we've heard, they want to keep their business separate. They're like, well, I don't want to post my relationship because, you know, I, I, this is my business or this is my brand. Yeah. What do you think about those people though who don't, announce that they're in a relationship and people don't know they're just walking around on this earth like they're not in a relationship I mean it all depends on like trust I think people that choose to keep their relationships private there's nothing wrong with them like if they want to do that they do that everyone's got free will but also listening to your partner if that is a problem mm -hmm. because I think if two people agree that they don't want to post online that's one thing but then if someone's like I really want to keep my my brand my business my personal life separate but the other half is like well hang on a second like I really I need this from you mm -hmm. are we able to compromise can we come to a, an agreement yeah. can we work together communicate through this and make it an active part of their relationship to work towards I think they're two completely separate issues um did you and Joel have a conversation before you went public with him? Yes. 
And did you guys have any terms of agreement of like communication of like, these are expectations. These are how you're going to represent me, or this is what we are going to do, or this is what we're not going to do. Any conversations around it? Yeah. What did that look like? Multiple. So it was, he's very, he's very crazy and wild. (laughs) (gasps) And do you know what? I used to be a lot worse. I used to be like, listen, like you can't say this, can't say that. Please don't do that. And then I I caught myself and I remember us uh, having a little break and he come back to me and was like, Chloe, like you put so much pressure on me. And I just apologized and said, I'm so sorry. I just, because I've worked so hard for what I have, Mm -hmm. I just don't want that to just crush and die and burn right yeah. in front of my eyes and we had a conversation and there were, it was a tough conversation because I had to to realistically tell him that you you can't say certain words you mm. can't say certain swear words you mm. can't post certain things and if you have any private videos of me you have to cross-reference with me before you can post it yeah and it's horrible because he had his social media for just his friends and family and he could post whatever he wanted and now I'm like, you can't post political stuff. You you can only post this type of content. Mm. And it's hard because he, he, I don't think he understands fully why. And sometimes I don't understand fully why. Yeah. But um, I don't want to take that risk of political stuff coming involved and then... Or religion. Like exactly. you understand like these are the rules of engagement. Because I'm tired with it. Yeah. What he feels and what his values are are separate to mine Some sometimes. But I don't want to be, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. It's just. No, I think that even if it, if, even if we weren't having a social media conversation, right, mm. it would still be a conversation about like, how do you represent me and how do you honor the things that I am trying to build? How will I represent you and mm. honor what you're trying to build? Yeah. Right. And so even if it wasn't like online on a public platform, if you weren't a public figure, let's just yeah. pretend you would still need this conversation yeah. so that the person knows what expectations when they're going to a party, when they're going, you know, and speaking, you know, on your behalf in public or Mm -hmm. you know when they're out frolicking or even how they talk about you at work like you want to always make sure that your partner is representing you yeah and when you decide to be in a relationship with someone those thoughts those feelings or whatever sentiments they have about certain issues can really like provoke controversy if especially if it's not aligned with yours and Mm -hmm. it's public statements that could circle back and like uh, potentially affect you or get you canceled Mm -hmm. So it, it, I 100% yeah. like understand there's certain things that my husband has to correct me on that I say, or that he's like, yeah, look, I get you're spicy, but like, you're still, you know, you're my wife. Like there yeah. are certain things that he has to address with me as well, mm-hmm. or things that I even have to sometimes ask permission. Like, can I post this, you know, quote or whatever? And he's like, uh, fine. And then other times he's like, no, yeah. <laughs> he's like, that's not how we're going to represent the business. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so he's probably saved me a few times uh, from making some bad decisions, but that's what partnership is for. Mm -hmm. Like you have to respect the other person's opinion. Mm -hmm. And so do you feel like Joel's like walking that line? Like he's like, okay, I'm I'm on board. Let's like do this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I still think some, some things are gray areas because at the minute we've had a conversation and he's like, I just feel like I can't post anything. Like I feel like what I feel worried about embarrassing you or saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. Mm. I'd rather just not have social media. Mm. And it's sad because I'm like, no, because you love social media. You love going on there and scrolling and, and doing funny, silly videos. And when you're at work with the boys, when you're out at the pub, but again, I just, it's the harsh reality of what comes with my job and my line of work. The same as you. Yeah. You know? Do you know what? Not even being a public figure, a lawyer, someone that that is in like a profession or has a brand that doesn't want to be damaged. And I think that is a serious conversation that we have had and will continue to keep having because yeah, it, it changes and it grows. No, for sure. How do you um, reconcile, right? Like, you had this past trauma, you get in this like happy relationship with Joel. How do you make sure that the things that you've been through in previous relationships, we'll call it baggage, doesn't come into this relationship? What have you been doing to like check yourself? Maintaining communication always with friends and family. How so? Because normally when I get into a relationship, Mm-mm. I'm all or nothing mm. and I stop having so much contact with my friends and family I'm just that girl yeah like I love my friends love my family but when I've got my person I've got my person yeah you know that's my best friend someone I want to go shopping with eat food with yeah lay in bed cuddle watch Netflix with you oh, know so good. and <laughs> I think 
maintaining whether my relationship is healthy or not or has any toxic traits I think it's important for me to disclose majority of what happens with my mum mm. to keep me in check um but in terms of old baggage I mean I've been to so many therapy sessions so you're still you're like uh, the work is not done I'm still the doing work the work isn't yeah done. yeah I'm still going to therapy I'm still talking about it actively and I'm 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 always on TikTok researching <laughs> you'd probably kill me with some TikTok of the things that I've learned <laughs> I'm like so this is this and the ure urethra is actually uh, located in the anus and you're like what Chloe, <laughs> <laughs> no but Chloe I love that you're like you're you're, you're giving folks like um I think a good Checks and balance, right? So while I don't think that like every experience that you have with like your partner should be shared with um, your family and friends no. because of judgment. No, yeah. In this particular situation, I think that the way that you're saying that you make, ma maintain ties with them is extremely important. And people understand the difference between you previously being in situations mm -hmm. where you would isolate and shut everyone out yeah. because of a controlling situation, you now know, no, 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 I'm going to share, I'm going to maintain these relationships, I'm going to mm -hmm. nurture these relationships, because this is my tribe. Mm -hmm. And I need these relationships also to make sure that I don't go down that slippery slope again. Yeah. And I think that is a way that you're using it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we abuse the sharing, and we just want people to like, validate like bad decisions that we're yeah. making. But this sounds like a very healthy way of using the share. Mm -hmm. And it's like no family friends, like, have my back watch out for me because I am a loveaholic mm -hmm. and I want to make sure, you know, I'm not caught in another situation. The other thing that I think is really great that what you're saying when you are making sure that you remain close with them is we get trapped in, um, relationships and we stop building those relationships with family and friends mm -hmm. and nurturing those relationships. And we actually become a dull and more boring version of ourselves because mm -hmm. we're not pouring into our other areas that our love cup yeah. needs to be filled by. Like Joel cannot be fully <laughs> responsible for pouring into your love cup. You no. need family, friends, me, yeah. like coming into your life and being like, Hey girl, what are you up to? What have you, what have you been? I care about what's going on with That's you what too. I struggle with sometimes though. And I do have to, it's hard. Myself. It's definitely hard. But like those other people that are passionate about you and those passions that you have mm -hmm. create more balance though. And it gives him yeah. an opportunity to miss you when you're yeah. nurturing those other relationships. If I'm not receiving as much love and affection and attention that I want and crave off of him, I can get it in other areas. For sure. You need it in other areas. Your partner mm -hmm. cannot be like you, your entire like being. He cannot mm -hmm. make up for all of like your happiness and he cannot be the only person who you seek out growth from. Yeah. The other people in your lives help you evolve. They hold a mirror up to you as well. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not fostering those relationships, then now you're whole like entirely dependent on one person's like we call mm -hmm. the self-expansion. You're entirely dependent on this person's like growth mm -hmm. to pour into you and what if he doesn't feel like growing that day? Like then you guys are both just stuck together. Yeah. So I love that you're like, no, no, no. I have my family and friends. And it also lets him know that you're not alone because guess who's easiest to manipulate? Guess who's easiest to like take advantage of the person who doesn't have those other relationships. Yes. So I love, I, I love this accountability piece and mm -hmm. like seeking out these other relationships still. Yeah. That's extremely important. It helps. For sure. Definitely. Because you For don't get sure. into that stage of denial. You don't get into that heavy stage of, you might get in like a little bit of a rabbit hole, but it's also like, I'm not at the bottom of the well looking up and I can't see the light, you know? Yeah. It, it stops you from getting to that point. So yeah. In the previous relationships where they were unhealthy and now you are enjoying the relationship that you're in, what are things that you implemented um, as far as communication is concerned with uh, arguments? Like when you and Joel have a disagreement, what's the difference between now the disagreements with him versus past relationships? What are you doing now differently? Um, what am I doing now that is different? Do you argue better? Is he a better arguer? No, he last is. Person? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Do you know what? It's what are we doing different, or what am I doing different? Whoa, let's let's hear the we. Okay. I like the we. Let's. What are we doing different? So I feel like with Joel, he he feels emotion to the extreme. Mm. Zero to a hundred anger. Zero to a hundred upset. Zero to a hundred happy zero to 100 excited yeah. and it's like whoa this is this is a lot you know 
and the same with me. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> zero to a hundred, zero to a hundred. But you know what? We don't always go to zero to a hundred in like anger or jealousy or anything like that. It's it's almost like excitement. Yeah, and then we start to annoy each other, and I'm like prodding him, and he's doing this, and what we have learned is that. He was never a communicator. Mm. And he always says to me, he goes, I've never, ever spoken to a woman nor respected a woman as much as I have you. Mm. Because you have taught me that you will listen to me and you will see and understand my train of thinking. Mm. No one has tried to understand the way Joel thinks like I have. Mm. And understanding your partner I think is the key yeah trying to being willing to even if you you don't feel like it that day trying to put yourself in their shoes he tries to put himself in my shoes sometimes it doesn't always fucking work yeah and I want to kick his head in yeah but I mean it would be boring if how I do you make him feel understood well. so I feel like a lot of women struggle with this mm-hmm they hear what you're saying, but they aren't making you feel as if it resonated. How do you make Joel feel understood? Is it something that you're saying? Is it something that you're doing? Something I'm saying or doing. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm going to try and give an example. Um, okay, so let's say we're driving. He gets road rage, right? He's shouting, he's screaming, he's flipping everyone off, whatever. <laughs> um. And I don't like that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm not intimidated by him, but just by the situation. Yeah. You know, I'm not that confrontational. And then I'll, I'll kind of just give him a second and then I'll, I'll turn to him and I'll like either hold his hand or just like massage the back of his head when he's driving. Because mm. if I go directly into why did you do yep. that? Instant defense. Yeah. Because you know he's already in that mood. Yep. So I kind of just show him that I am your, I'm here with you. Mm. Like we're we're in a team. Yeah, I'm doing that. Like I'm scrubbing his balls. Yeah, or no, something. I can like I think I'm I've seen like, you do I'm that before. His hair. <laughs> I think I've seen you do that with his yeah, head when I'm he's sitting like, next I just to touch you. Touch his hair, you know. That's like that's my sign. So touch of comfort, touch affection. You know? You're I'm using like, touch I'm and affection. Here. And then after that, I'll kind of just say to him like, I completely understand why you've done that, but it does like it does unsettle me a little bit. And I'll try and say it in a way of like, not you've done something wrong, but praise him. You you taught me this as well. Try and praise him for the things that he has done right in that situation. Yeah. So don't just attack on, I don't like it when yep. you do that. Why yep. did you do that? You're a prick for doing that. It's like, oh, do you know what? I'm actually proud of you yeah. for being able to calm yourself down after five minutes of having a rant. I think I, I can see improvement in this and, and having like those mm. positive reflections. I think that's, I, I don't do it all the time, but like when it matters most, I do. Chloe, so this is a nugget right here. One, I appreciate that you're like actually applying, like you you will hear some advice and you will actually like implement it. That's oh, one yeah. of my favorite things about you. Second thing though, that I love that you just admitted to was like, I don't do it all the time. I think that we think once we have the tools or once we know that we have this like power or ability to exercise this formula, that every single time it should end beautifully. It should work every single time. But I think that it's important that you admit that every time you don't knock it out the park, you're like, no, sometimes I snap back at him. Sometimes, yeah. you know, I won't start off with the affirmation. It's unrealistic. It's unrealistic. But my goal is always for like my clients and even for myself, I'm not going to get it 10 out of 10 because I'm human. I'm not Jesus. I'm not going to get it 10 out of 10. But if I can at least get it seven to eight out of 10, that's like, huge game changer Mm -hmm. in my level of peace for the year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just did like this post the other day, um, like 10 things that you can do to get a man to like lean more into his masculinity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was like, uh, when we're arguing, we're upset saying, yes, you're right. I'm wrong. That one drove women so crazy. They were like, I can't believe that that would be one of the things because what if he's wrong? And it's like, well, let's, let's discuss because in that moment if he's in a rage if he's upset I don't want him to think that I'm his you know his enemy I want him to think that I'm his ally because if I'm his ally and he feels understood Mm. he will now listen to me but if he thinks I'm the enemy he's gonna go to war I don't agree with that I honestly think 
I would need you to explain that a little bit more. Only because I have been in that position where I've said to someone, okay, you're right, I'm wrong, because I don't want the confrontation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm avoiding it. And then I don't have the backbone to then confront that situation again at the right time. Oh, uh, okay, that part. And say, by the way, earlier when I said you're right, I'm wrong, actually what I meant is this, 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 and this. Like how would you full circle for someone that's watching saying you're right, I'm wrong, and then circling back to the actual truth? Okay, so usually we when, when, when you go into argument with anyone, usually you feel you're right and the yeah. other person feels they're right yeah but if i can't get him to listen and what i really want is peace or affection or whatever my goal is i want him to do something for me in that moment i'm not going to be able to even get him to hear what i said mm -hmm. if he doesn't feel like i'm on his team yeah in your example with the um car situation with the road rage if you would have said oh my god you embarrassed me like you know i can't believe mm -hmm. it would have set joel off right yeah. so because you let him know i'm your teammate he now mm -hmm. is more likely to listen to whatever follows after that the second thing that you did was you shared how you felt mm -hmm. and you didn't make it an attack on like his behavior you made it about how it made you uncomfortable or how it made you feel and it's harder to argue feelings mm -hmm. so you did that very well in my situation where i'm saying um if he's in an upset rage, sometimes I am wrong. And I need to just say like, I'm wrong versus trying to defend myself. And mm -hmm. usually nine times out of 10, we go straight into defense. We go straight into, well, I did it because, or if you wouldn't have done it now, this person is not going to back down. He's not going to calm down. Yeah. So if I just instantly take accountability, even mm -hmm. if let's use the scenario, I don't yeah. agree in that moment. In that moment, I think that he's dead wrong mm -hmm. to keep the peace in that moment. I will say, you're right. I'm wrong because a part of it is true. The part that's mm -hmm. true is, is there a different way that I could have handled this situation that would have made you happier? That part is true. Probably. Yeah. I probably could have done that. So you know what? Mm -hmm. You're right. I'm wrong. Even though I don't maybe like the act that you did later on when he has calmed down mm -hmm. and he feels understood. Okay. I will circle back and be like, Hey, I want to go back to, what transpired. I want to, I want to go back to the incident when, you know, I don't know, you said I, you know, didn't make dinner right. Let's just say that this is what it was. Um, I want to make sure I'm not misinterpreting your intentions. Mm -hmm. When you said da, 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 it made me feel. So we go to feelings. It made, it right. hurt my feelings. Am I interpreting this correctly? And now he can listen because I didn't attack him. I didn't say you're a dick for what you said. It's a question. It's a question. Am I interpreting this correctly? Because it made me feel hurt. It made me feel aggravated. Mm -hmm. It didn't sit well with me. And once again, I admit I could have delivered it better to you. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure that I'm interpreting this pain that was caused yeah. accurately. And usually he would be like, what? No, that's not what I meant at all. What I meant was, you know, that it was just a little salty. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm like, oh, okay. So this was a me thing. It wasn't what you intended for, mm -hmm. but that's very hard. You're saying the circling back to the conversation is very hard mm -hmm. because once the peace comes, you just want to leave it there. Yeah. But your feelings still need to be verified. You yes. still need to check. Am I feeling this correctly? Mm -hmm. And most of us don't because we want to avoid confrontation. Mm -hmm. We don't circle back to it. And it's not confrontation. It's just communication. Mm -hmm. Depending on who you're with. Depending on who you're with. It's a massive factor. And I'm not telling people to be a yes man. What I am saying though, is for partnership. Sometimes what it's going to look like is the person first feeling like they're understood. Mm -hmm. And I want to highlight like the, what that formula looks like. So it looks like the person having an action and you making an observation, how it's articulated that they feel understood is you in that moment expressing the same sentiments as them. Mm -hmm. If he says that guy's a dick for cutting me off, yeah. that guy is a dick. You did not yeah. deserve that, babe. Yeah. Versus, oh my God, you're crazy. You're an asshole. When yeah. are you going to control your road rage? Yeah. So we're letting his defenses down by mm -hmm. him knowing that you're his teammate. Mm -hmm. Now he feels understood. Now, mm -hmm. anything that you say after that, he'll, he'll be listen. More receptive to listen because you, to, he already yeah. sees you get him. Yeah. And so in those moments when we're experiencing conversation, I want my partner to feel like I get him. Yeah. And sometimes it's not you're right or wrong. Sometimes How, it's like I could have handled that better. One thing that I really want to know, right, is I feel like I'm equipped with some of the tools that you've taught me. Yeah. And I love applying it because they work. Like they genuinely work. Like you've, you've taught me the 
Is it the shit sandwich? What do you call it? The spicy <laughs> yes, sandwich. My spicy sandwich. The spicy sandwich. Yes. <laughs> spicy sandwich. This technique. And I honestly want to know how to teach him to be able to do that as well. Because one of the reasons why I just said to you a second ago, um, sometimes I do it. Yeah. It's because sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm going to be the bigger person. Okay. I need to be more emotionally intelligent. I need to be more emotionally aware of his feelings. Sometimes it pisses me off when it's not reciprocated. For sure. And I'm like, I'm putting all this money Look at this good behavior. In. Like, <laughs> not necessarily look at what I'm doing to save but this still, relationship. But you want a reward for Just your... Not like, necessarily the re reward. It's like having that conversation to say to him, these are the tools that I use to not escalate our arguments. Yeah. Can you also use them as well? Yeah. Because you might be at 90% one day and I might be at 20. For sure. And I might be at 90 and you might be at 30. So depending on the day... We can use our emotional intelligence to go, actually, you've had a pretty shit day today. Yeah. And of course, you're going to be tired and raggy and you want to go to bed and you don't want to have sex. And I'm going to look at that because I'm coming on my period and think, oh, he thinks I'm fat, he thinks I'm ugly, I've got spots, I've got acne, I'm coming on my period, I'm emotional. Like, yep. oh, he doesn't love me. Oh my God, <laughs> he's cheating on me. <laughs> and then it just spirals and spirals and spirals and spirals. Instead of that, if he were to just sit there and say, babe, I am extremely tired right yep. now. None of this is about you. Yep. I love you. I know you're coming on your period. Doesn't make you crazy. It makes you extra emotional. Yep. So let me just give you a head rub and then we'll go to bed and we'll wake up tomorrow and start fresh. Yep. That is so much better so much. than me having to say, I feel like you don't want to have sex with me right now. And mm -hmm. it's really, un it's, it makes me feel like you don't love me. Yeah. And then the attack what do you mean? I've just had a busy day at work. What, what do you, oh, this is what you always start just before bed. What's going on? Yeah. And I'm like, well, hang on a second now. I'm upset because my emotions are being disregarded. Yeah. Because it's hard to argue with emotion. So it's like, I'm trying to explain. It's not being reciprocated. How do you then forward that to your man and say, this is what I want you to help practice? So that's a great question because I think that we oftentimes believe that if I perform this great behavior, I use the formula my partner will then mirror it and give it back to me, right? They're just going to pick up on like these tools that you inherited and that you're starting to execute. And because your partner is the closest to you, usually with good habits, just like with bad habits, they are impressionable. However, if you know that you have a formula that you're exercising in your head, mm -hmm. I always suggest that we have that open communication with our partner. So in situations where you're like, dang, in this moment, I wish he would just do this, but he's not. He's resorting to his own ways. He's not mirroring the behavior you've been giving him. Where you, In those moments, I suggest telling your partner exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. So you think he doesn't want to sleep with you. Baby, I'm feeling somewhat insecure right now. Did I interpret this correctly? It feels like a form of rejection. Am I right or am I wrong for this interpretation? Mm -hmm. Like, because what I want to feel is comfort from you. What mm -hmm. I want to hear is you telling me that I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. But most of us are not comfortable telling our partner what oh, we gosh. need. We're not comfortable saying what we want in that moment. Mm -hmm. We want them to just magically know what to do. Know what to do. Yeah. We want them to just mirror our behavior because we think that I don't know how old is Joel, 20, 25, or 30, the, the, the 30 years or however long Joel's been on this earth that you're mm -hmm. going to come in and, un, you know, un, unravel everything that his parents and his previous communication style had yeah. been ingrained yeah. in him. And this is what makes the dynamic of relationships so complicated. But I feel like even while we were together, um, like taping, I, I saw you starting to implement things. I saw you starting to mm -hmm. communicate more about how you felt with him and what you needed in those moments. I think I even saw there was a moment where you were like not secure about something on social. It was something that he like, I don't know if it was a post. I don't know mm -hmm. what it was, but you told him how it made you feel in that moment. And mm -hmm. you gave him an opportunity to give you the comfort that you needed yeah. and to tell you like that's you're not interpreting it correctly it's actually this and it mm -hmm. made you feel better i can't remember what exactly do you remember oh, i can't remember what it was i think it was i thought he'd gone out for the night and he wasn't oh he didn't answer his calls. phone he didn't answer his phone but it was like over a long period and i thought oh no like what is going on that's what it was and then it but instead of next time he calls and you attack 
instead of mm-hmm. ignoring him and blocking him because you didn't hear from him, mm-hmm. what you did was let him know, like, baby, I'm happy that, you know, you were just resting. Sleeping. Yeah, that, 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 that brings me so much comfort. <laughs> when I hear from you before you go to bed, though, it makes me feel That's so much safer. I feel like what you just said as well, like you can't expect your partner, whether you've been with them years or months or days, to change their old habits depending on the habits with Joel he doesn't need to say no no I love you before he goes to bed Mm -hmm. for me that's a necessity and it's crazy how that's a thing because if you don't say no no I love you before you go to bed I think you're not thinking of me (laughs) I think that you're 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 talking to someone else yeah or that you just don't really care my my craziness is if you don't kiss me before you leave the house uh, what if this is the last moment that we ever see each other? I know. And I'm like, ah, I need I'm the like kiss. My and my dad. husband's like, ah, like he's he well, he gives it to me, right? He's it. like, okay, here's your stupid kiss, and I'm like, thank you. But like, that's not a necessity for him. That's something mm-hmm. that I implemented, but I had to communicate that this is like something that I need. It makes mm. me feel safer. Yeah, it makes me feel more connected to you. I understand the power of affection in relationships. So it's like all of these things behind it. Mm-hmm. If the person cares about you, right? Not maybe one of your exes, but if the person cares about you, yeah. he's not going to knock it out the park every time. He might forget, but you know that you need this thing. So you are responsible for reminding him in a loving way that you need mm-hmm. this thing, even though he yeah. doesn't knock it out the park. But if he cares, he will make attempts. Yeah. You will make attempts. Just write post-it notes all over your mirrors. <laughs> I need you to tell me Shout you love me from before you go to bed. Rental. That's what you should do. <laughs> I want to buy one of them xylophones. But, I, but I'm just saying, we're not perfect though, Chloe. Why? Like he's not perfect. We're not perfect. Like my husband, like none of us are perfect. Mm-hmm. But these things, we want these things to become the routine. Mm-hmm. We want these things to become the habit. But the only yeah. way for them to become the habit is for us to like actively, practice, consciously, consciously practice and reinforce it. it. Yeah, it's a lot. I know. It's a <gasps> lot. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. What advice do you have for people who are going through breakups that want to begin their healing process? Like. They want to get rid of that pain. What are things that you've done to get rid of the pain? Understand that you are not going to get rid of it Mm. until it goes. You can't speed it up, slow it down, sidetrack it, go around it. You need to just go straight through it. It's something that you will come to terms with the more and more experience you have with just going through it in relationships. One massive thing I've learned through all my love and heartbreaks is... Maybe that's also tied to why I don't leave straight away. Mm. Because I know I have to go through it. Yeah. Because my experience tells me, Chloe, you have to go through it. Yeah. You know? Cry, scream, punch your pillow, watch Bridget Jones, eat ice cream, (laughs) gain a load of weight, (laughs) like talk to friends and family, isolate yourself if you want. Honestly, do what you feel is best for you. Only you know what to do with yourself emotionally and you know what makes you feel good I would say don't listen to too much advice around when you're feeling that vulnerable because I feel like when I get lost I search anywhere for answers and advice yeah sometimes take on advice that isn't actually good Mm -hmm. for me so I'm understanding that there's people out there that do love you and care about you only trust their advice um healing journey everything that I have done on any of my healing journeys I've had a few um therapy actually type in and research different types of therapy um listen to spicy Mighty's podcast (laughs) also um I would just when I got sober for two and a half years for me it was documenting writing journals, diaries, Mm. how am I feeling? And if I genuinely hated the person that I was with and the person I became when I was with this person, i.e. my ex, I would write down what I hated about him and myself whilst being with Mm. him every single morning, every single morning to remind myself why this was bad for me, what he done to abuse me emotionally, physically, to come to terms with this isn't right. I need to t- t- seek help. Yeah. <laughs> this is really not okay. 
even love notes to yourself, like writing down, I deserve the world. I deserve a perfect man. I deserve a perfect woman. I know you don't like the word perfect. Yeah. Somewhere, <laughs> I'm like, there's a perfect, Chloe. My perfect expectation <laughs> of, a, of a person. I just, every heart breaks different. So you handle every single one differently. There's every different, one. is a different process for each one. Yeah. And I, but I think that that's important because each one needs something different. Uh-huh. But I think the things that you named are extremely beneficial. I think mm. they're important. Uh, have you ever done anything bad for you in order to get over someone? Oh yeah. Like what? Um, go on a massive sex rampage. <laughs> Honestly, I've been there multiple times. It's like, I'm not ashamed of it now. Because yeah. It's, what got it's a part me. of the learning process. I, used though. A condom. I didn't catch the clap, you know, <laughs> not shaming anyone that has or has got it. But it was, it was an eye opener for me. It was like, oh God, no, I feel even more shit. Yeah. Cause what did, so what did you learn from that experience? Doing the bad things in mm. order to try to feel better. What did you learn from those? That it only lasts a second. Mm quite literally yeah (laughs) it's that temporary (laughs) gratification (laughs) um and you just in like all this all this baggage that you're carrying from your ex that you need to just filter through and process and accept and come to terms with and just go through it you're not adding multiple different people into the mix you're then sharing your energy yeah you're then taking on other and then and then you just get to a point where you're like i feel so overstimulated so overwhelmed and then you start feeling the guilt the shame the remorse all the emotions back all over again but tenfold yeah because now you're like questioning your own self like it was just the relationship but now it's like am i even sane how could i do that and then you start slut shaming yourself for sure. And then you've given yourself now more things that you have to forgive. It was bad enough with that relationship mm. and like your choices you made. Then after you go through the rampage or all yeah. the toxicity, then it's like, uh, now I have like 10 more things that I have to forgive about my decision yeah. making. <laughs> I think just doing everything with intention. Don't do anything without intention is how I bypass the bad things that I'm attracted to, like the alcohol and all of that. I think why am I putting myself in this position? Is this going to be good for me? Is this going to better my position right now? And how is it, how is it going to help me emotionally? Mm, great questions. Great questions. What does Chloe love about relationships? You say you love love and you love relationships. What's your favorite thing about being in a relationship? Physical touch. <laughs> The touch. You're like, get the guilt-free touchy. <laughs> just touch me. I don't care. Just like, I just love showing them off and I, I've noticed that when I'm in a relationship I'm all in I'm like oh, this is my person mm-hmm. and I love the the fantasy side of it yeah I mean we've spoke about this before yeah you said, Chloe sometimes you need to be pulled pulled back down to ground <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I love living in a fantasy world I love Feels it so good when I'm, when I'm dreaming about having six kids with a Lambo outside and I'm like this I could imagine myself this could really happen this this is is gonna happen yes so yeah that one of my favorite parts of being in a relationship and love is just that feeling of just security Mm. knowing that you have like your partner yeah safe space yeah yeah and I don't have to carry the bins out by myself (laughs) <laughs> that part that's important the, the trash is always important <laughs> i feel like that's the number one example Definitely. of like what we yeah. ask guys to do throw in the trash carry when the bin out short nails, I'll carry some, <laughs> but when i have long nails it's all up to you i'm sorry what do you think that joel's favorite part of me relationship with you is i think <sighs> so many things <laughs> so many great things he gets to oh, inherit by so being with things. you i think he appreciates that I've stuck around mm. through through all the times that we have been through, whether it be highs or lows, we've always got through it. We've always sat there and communicated through it. And I think the reason why he loves love and being with me is because deep down he knows that he feels secure with me. If, it sounds like he also like is confident in the fact that he's accepted by you. Mm-hmm. And that's extremely yeah, important. He, he's got his own demons. So have we all. But I think I, I try and go out of my out of my way the extra bit just to remind him of his potential, to remind him that he is capable of so much and he is able to do that as long as he puts his mind to it. And I think 
He does appreciate that. Do you feel like it's hard to be with you because you're a public figure? Like, would it be easier for Joel if you weren't on Netflix shows? Do you know what? I think sometimes I don't even realize because me and him are just indoors watching Netflix, mm -hmm. eating food, cooking meals, going around on electric scooters, <laughs> like causing chaos. We went to yeah. an escape room the other day. Oh, you're living your best it LA life. Fun. <laughs> like we're just like two little peas in a pod. Like I don't really, sometimes I forget mm -hmm. and he forgets until it comes down to like the social media thing or me living out here because I've got myself a visa for work. Yeah. And he hasn't got his visa. So now we're long distance. So I think it's tiny little reminders that remind him of, oh God, she is where she is and I am where I am. She's in LA, I'm in London. How are we going to make it work? That are the slight pressures, but. What is the game plan for that? So like long distance relationships can be hard, right? Mm -hmm. Um. I've done entire like episodes on like how to maintain a long distance relationship. Mm. What's your guys' oh, game you're plan? Be coming over to, for dinner tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get him on FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> What's the game plan for you guys to sustain the relationship? Because it can be challenging mm -hmm. when if, if physical touch is literally your like mm -hmm. thing that you love, your love yeah. language, and you don't have that. What are you guys going to do to make sure that you keep the relationship strong? What are you implementing? I think leaning into the the sapiosexual type love touch me emotionally mm -hmm. intellectually mm -hmm. you know I think dealing with the the long distance one thing that we have said and continued to have said we don't have a solid plan we're just going to take it one day at a time one day at a time as long as I'm living in for today yeah and I'm able to say I've communicated the best I can I'm able to feel my feelings if I'm sad I don't have to call him every time if I'm crying I don't have to call him every time I'm crying mm. because we're both going to get through it and I can't expect him because at the minute he's only just left so it's not like we've actually done long distance yet yeah so now it's starting this is the this is game time that, that was beginning <laughs> Um, we haven't been apart for more than a, a couple of weeks. Ever. 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 So this is a big deal. And I am worried that, but I'm not worried about anything major. It's just, I don't want communication to break down. Mm -hmm. And I don't want us to get like complacent. Is that the right word? Yeah, complacent mm -hmm. in just like, Jumping on the phone. How are you? Yeah, good. What are you doing? Nothing. Oh, all right then. Right, I love you. I'll speak to you soon. I want... How do I add more spice in that long distance relationship to keep it entertaining? Yeah. Because at the minute, I'm just going to be seeing them on FaceTime. <laughs> the FaceTimes are good. I can whip the vibrator out. You guys are going to have to get really creative though. So mm -hmm. like a uh, spicy tip, if you're doing long distance relationship actually have video dates. Remember during COVID when like, well, I don't know how much it affected the UK, but everything was shut down here. So daters were actually having like Zoom dates and mm. FaceTime dates where it's like, okay, you're gonna order Chipotle, I'm gonna order Chipotle and we're gonna eat it together. Yeah. We're gonna start this movie at the same time. Uh -huh. We're going to read this book at the same time oh. and then we're gonna like discuss it. Like you're gonna have to get creative with like the things that you're doing so it still feels like you're dating. Mm. Of course I know you're gonna be like phenomenal with like sexting and <laughs> With, with with those I think things, I lost it, to be honest with you. I'm like I'm always knackered after my melatonin in bed by eleven. But like it is, it is harder when you don't get like that quality time. So you're gonna have to create it to the close of you know the, the best of your ability, mm -hmm. um, and actually have things to look forward to. One thing that I always recommend for long distance is like having it on your calendar, mm -hmm. booked and ready to go. What date you guys are gonna see each other? Done. Because it's the same thing when. Um, if we know that we have like a taping or something that we have to appear on air, if I know like, okay, August 17th is my start taping date, I'm going to diet and exercise and make sure I'm getting my facials. I'm going to make sure my hair is done. I'm going to make sure my nails are done before mm -hmm. I show up. It's the same thing because you know you have something to look forward to and a yeah. goal in mind. Yeah. So when you see that date on the calendar of like, oh, I get to see Joel on September I'm gonna 27th. Work. I'm going to work a little bit harder. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to tan. <laughs> you're going to do this. So you're going to start to already be in like preparation for mm. him, still keeping like the magic alive mm. because you need hope. And I think it also gives you something to talk about because if you've got that trip booked, so I am going back home um, in the next however long, 
it's a surprise to my mom, so I'm not going to oh, say the date. I'm going to tell her to watch this episode so she finds yeah, out now. No, no, she, she knows I'm coming. She just doesn't know when. So I'm going to keep the date a secret. But it gives us something to talk about. Like recently, we just went to like Yosemite, Lake Tahoe, Vegas. So we done like a week. Oh, so we done like a day traveling. Yeah. Got somewhere. Day traveling. Got somewhere. And I think when I go back to the UK, I don't just want to moving out of my hometown. I never went to like Scotland, Wales, camped, done any of that, see any of the any of the scenery. Yeah. And now I'm going to be going back home. I'm like, let's book a trip. Yeah. Like normally I'd be stuck in my discover room. your city, yes. your country, I, I different take it for state. Granted. Yeah. And that's exciting because when we do have a little FaceTime date, I'm able to say, do you want to go Scotland? Yep. <laughs> do you want to get some iron blue? <laughs> I love when you do your accents. <laughs> Not good at them. <laughs> you, wait, do your American accent real quick. Can I have a caramel macchiato? That was, you guys, that was great. Was wasn't it all right? <laughs> That's exactly how I, I don't order. I don't know though. <laughs> I order my caramel macchiatos just like that. No. Caramel macchiato. I don't know. I love that you went to instantly to Starbucks, though. That's what you hear oh, <laughs> as <no>. order. <laughs> we're we're copaholics. <laughs> okay, Chloe, I time. love that I have you. I know my time is limited with you. I always wrap up the show with like a naked truth question. So on a positive note, you get to share with us. You get to travel back into time, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't get to change anything. You just get to travel back to this one moment, the greatest moment you've ever experienced in life. What moment are you traveling back to? Can't change anything. You just get to relive it. Mm. Tell. I'm, I'm thinking. Spicy, this is like the biggest moment of my life. <laughs> what do I want to choose as the biggest moment of I my life? Choose? Um, one moment. The day I won top model. Mm. The day I won top model, not because of the title, because I felt like my family were so proud of me. Mm. And I was the first time in forever proud of myself. Oh, yeah, that was a big That's biggie huge. For me. I had my boyfriend at the time, my whole family, my, my friends, front row. There was like gold confetti pouring over me, hundreds of people in the room. And I thought, wow, I did not expect it. I was 18 years old. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's incredible. I'd go back to that. <laughs> You're like, if I could relive that, it would be that. <laughs> I'd probably flash them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to change anything. No, well, do it in my head. You got to re, you just get to relive it. But that's like, that's amazing. I'm like, I would want to go back to that too. I wish I would have been able to experience that with you. That sounds phenomenal. Yeah. Like that's a really big deal. It was, it felt amazing. It was very wow. nice. Yeah. Chloe, you had like an incredible journey as far as like reality shows are concerned. I want to know what are the goals in the next five years? What do you envision your career and love life looking like in five years from now? And then I'm done with you. Then I really get to release you. <laughs> I would say, oh wait, what was the question again? Five, five years five from years now. And love. What does our career and love life look like? So I would feel like Chloe's. No, I know. I know that Chloe's love life and Chloe's career is going to be where she is needed to be at that moment in time. First of all. Second of all, she is, I am, planning to just have an abundance of love in my relationship. To maintain all communications with friends and family. <laughs> To continuously grow mentally, emotionally, and physically because we are forever evolving. Yeah. Being aware that my expectations sometimes get in the way of me in relationships. I want to be married, not just engaged. Mm. I want to be married. Mm. Um, I want to start having a family as soon as possible. I've always said 26, I want my first child. I'm 25. Oh, I was like, what year are we So okay. I've got a year. <laughs> but I'm not going to put pressure on myself. Yeah. I'm just going to say I would like to have children. I would love to have them. Career-wise, I want an umbrella of shows that I've hosted. Yeah. And I want to genuinely fuel my passion and purpose with people like you. Mm. And actually, I got added into the mix. I feel special. And love <laughs> because you love what you do. Oh, Chloe. And it's so important to love what you do. Thank and you. I think anyone, as long as you 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 work, you earn money, you're able to fund it, like you can do 
whatever passion you feel like you should do, like your side hustle, your side quest, because it fuels you. It does. You know, I don't care about money or anything like that or financial things or cars or handbags. I could literally walk in in a bin bag and go, I know my purpose. Yeah. As long as I know my purpose and what fuels me, I am good. Oh, Chloe. Okay, so. we're, we're on the road to manifestation. That is what is going to happen five years from mm-hmm. now. It, it's, so be it. Yeah. Ding! <laughs> I feel like we have to do like a ten minute meditation or something. Everyone back home, please just cross meditate. your fingers and cross your toes. Yes, yeah, meditate. I'm like, oh, I love that I'm in the mix too. So I want it to happen. <laughs> no, Chloe, I love you. You got to let everybody know where to find you, um, where to follow you, where to get your content, all of the above. Let them know where they can reach you. Uh-huh. So my Instagram is Chloe Veach, V-E-I-T-C-H official. TikTok is it's Chloe Veach. Again, V-E-I-T-C-H. Um, and that is it. You guys, there you have it. You can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com, schedule a consultation. Also, make sure that you share this episode with a friend or family member. Click and subscribe to The Spicy Life. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. (gasps) Hey! We've been spiced! The Spicy Life!